you, you lived in Canada for yes. how many years? I was there for seven years. How was it like being an African in in, in America, in Canada, um, in the diaspora? Different. I feel at home. <laughs> there is no place that does not have problems. Mm. I lived in America. We are a disaster as of now, Africa. We are a disaster because they choose to tell us we are a disaster. You and I yes. can change that yeah. narrative. You and I will lift each other up. You and I will get our children to know who they are, mm -hmm. to get them interested in what is agriculture, what is mining. What is wrong with us Africans? There's nothing wrong with us. What is wrong with the other people that come and steal from us without not even feeling guilty about it? Wealth is not built overnight. Thank you. Home never left me. Oh. I left the continent, okay. but Africa never left me. We don't think about the future at all. Yeah. We don't think about our grandkids. Mm -hmm. As long as I eat today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, I'll, I'll make a plan. Mm -hmm. Instant gratification. My spirit yes. is at peace in this country. I am in Blawayo and I am with Kaya's Gogo. She's really amazing and she's creating content. Amazing content, I'm telling you. She, she met one of the greatest African content creators that is What Am I? That is really huge. When I saw you, I was like, wow. You know, when you speak, the confidence that you have. I, I, think, it, I think it comes with age. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. And I've, had, I've raised four children. Oh, oh. So <laughs> that, that gives you all the confidence you want. Okay. So you, you need in, in life. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. You'll see when you start raising your children. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm starting to, you know, experience the whole thing. Uh -huh. It's... It's 50-50 sometimes. Uh -huh. It's really hard and sometimes uh -huh. it's something that you say, wow, this, uh -huh. this is amazing. Uh -huh. Having a family, sometimes it's talking like, is, is it really me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's something that is amazing that you have to thank God for. Mm -hmm. You raised your kids in, in America? Um, I, yes. Oh, yeah. okay. the, 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 the bulk of the time okay. we ended up in in America, but I always speak of uh, North America. North America. Uh, because I, I lived in Canada. You, you lived in Canada for yes. how many years? I was there for seven years. Have you ever felt lonely? When I say lonely, like away from Africans, away from relatives? It was the toughest thing I ever did. The first, the first two years were very rough on me. I, uh, they were rough. They were rough, mm -hmm. really hard. I felt lonely. It's really amazing. I mean, lately I've been visiting different houses, so. I, I, I saw the new in your house. Eee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a People big... are really building. Yeah, right. A lot of people have been complaining, you know, when it comes to people who are building houses big in Africa, uh -huh. while least in the diaspora. Uh -huh. They are saying that uh, they, they won't have time to enjoy uh, their sweat. Uh -huh. And what what do you think about it? You know, I think most of these things are personal choices, right? For us, yeah. the reason why we we came, uh -huh. we wanted to make sure that we have, uh, you know, in our sunset years, we have uh, time to enjoy oh, okay. uh, the the home that we've built and also the country that we love so much. Are you left-handed? Yeah, yeah. You're like my son. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he's left-handed. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so Sadza is being mourned by, <laughs> by Kelvin. <laughs> That's what Gogos do. They make the Wazukuru. Exactly. I, I saw the other video on YouTube of Wodemeyer. Uh -huh. We were actually talking about people who are left-handed. You know, uh -huh. when you eat, when you're left-handed, it's, it's... It's taboo. Exactly. In yeah. The, in, in their country. Yeah, and then I don't here, think it's like that here. In Zimbabwe, I don't think so. Because no. it's... But I feel like, you know, when you grow, when you, when you grow up, uh -huh. you start to realize, like, you should actually, you know, use your right hand more often. It seems like a bit rude when you use a, your left hand. But if you're brave, you have to remember this is biological. Yes. Being left-handed. 
Thank you. It, it's, your brain is wired that way. Of yeah. course, you might end up being ambidextrous where you're able to use both hands. Yeah, yeah. But if you are, you, your, your brain is predominant on the left hand side, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. No. Thank you. Especially for us, there's nothing wrong. Even my mom, my mom said there's nothing wrong. This stove, this seems like one of the most advanced ones. <laughs> <laughs> Simple gas stove. It, yes. it works well for us because... Oh, it's a gas stove? Yes. We use gas. Okay. Uh, to make it easy when there's no power, we can still cook. So what, what was the first thing that you did when you moved here? When we came? Yeah. When you, well, when, you... when we came, uh, our aim... Because we didn't build this house. Okay. Okay. It was already built. Oh, okay. We liked what you saw. Yeah. The surrounding. The surrounding. So we knew we were to do some modifications. And you did. And we did. It's good to show other people that it is possible. That's the whole idea. Wow. That it's doable. Yeah. <laughs> people don't know that. Mm. <laughs> What's interesting about you and Kundai? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you come a long way. Yeah, we do. I mean, I used to, he gave me accommodation. A place to stay, a place to stay when I defended from university in mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And I was making videos for him. That's where I learned social commentary. So, he's also from uh, Tinoi? No. He's from here. Oh. From, from Harare. From Harare. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Wow. God used him to change my life. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, what happened to him is that there was a certain time that he stopped YouTube. Mm -hmm. He disappeared. Mm -hmm. And most of the people like me, we took the momentum and we, we grew. Mm -hmm. But he came back and he came back stronger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really hard to grow on social media in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. but we're waking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that you, you, uh, you feel that my story is well worth sharing. It validates what we've wanted to do, oh, wow. uh, to share, mm -hmm. to demystify. Thank you. Uh, what it is to be in Zimbabwe, in Africa. Exactly. And what uh, it means to, to live here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On social media, Africa is portrayed in a bad light. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm happy that you guys, you are here in Zimbabwe. You left the American dream. That's what they say. <laughs> Everyone wants to go to America. Mm -hmm. We are adapting the Western culture too much. I, I, that's what I feel, at least. Mm -hmm. We are losing our Ubuntu. Exactly. Uh, in the quest to adopt that which is supposedly better than what our own customs and culture is. Thank you. And uh, unfortunately, in that quest mm -hmm. or that desire to be like, <laughs> we, we are losing some of the things that are really, really good for us. Thank you. Yeah. I, like it. I, I love everything about this house. Oh, thank you. You guys, you're surrounded by nature. Yes, you're, we are. You're yeah. collaborating with nature. Uh-huh. Trying. No, you're not trying. You're doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're trying doing it. to live harmoniously with the land. After having lived in the concrete jungle yeah. for over 30 years, uh, you always feel, personally, we felt uh -huh. we needed somewhere where we get to touch the soil or oh, touch the ground exactly play with this soil grow things in it it seems like you now appreciate where you come from more and more after spending so much years abroad i think it, you get to that realization i've always loved being uh, you know that the fact that i am african and uh having left the motherland and living abroad don't get me wrong, it was good. It was good. There were good, very good things about living abroad. Uh -huh. I learned a lot. Um, but I never lost that identity of being an African. Proudly African. Mm -hmm. How many years have you been in abroad? I live, we lived abroad for 30, outside of the country, we lived outside for 31 years. 31 years? Yes. Yo, that's a lot. Uh -huh. So you were 
in which country specific? We, we first of all went to Botswana. Botswana. <laughs> so you, you speak the language? I am forgetting it now because I haven't been speaking it with anybody for a, for, for a while. So I, would, I still remember Lekai, oh. Kitengi, you know, I still remember that. Uh, and then from Botswana, we went uh, to uh, Canada. Canada. Proudly Canadian. Oh. Yes, sir. So and, you're a citizen over there? Yes. Wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. And I love Canada, but I love Zimbabwe. This is the land of my birth. So yes. I have that deep connection. Wow. I can live anywhere on this earth, mm -hmm. but I will never sever my ties with Zimbabwe. The you land of my birth. Oh, you love Zimbabwe. So I lived in Canada and then uh, uh, lived and worked in the United States. In the United States. Yes. Comparing Canada with America, which one is actually, you know, comfortable to live in? I love Canada. Canada. Yes. But is, is, is the weather friendly? No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about your time in Botswana. Mm -hmm. How was it? I loved being in Botswana. I, 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 I worked in uh, Ramotswa. Oh. The little town uh, outside of Havroni. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. I, uh, I grew as a nurse. Oh. Yes. Uh, a young nurse. Okay. There. Okay. Worked in the, children's, in the children's ward there. And I loved it. I loved Botswana. Uh, we are one. We are, we are one. one people. Thank you for we mentioning get, that. We get divided and separated by borders. Thank you. That were imposed on us at the Berlin conference, somewhere where we were not part of, and we, we embrace that division. I am because they are. Yeah. We are one. Exactly. Do you think that there's going to come a time where we remove those borders? Uh, hopefully, I, I don't see that in my lifetime, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's somewhere in the generations to come, I hope we will come to the realization that we are stronger together. Thank you. I'm going to ask this question. It seems like there's some divisions here in Africa, like we, we don't regard ourselves as one most of the time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to come a time where we embrace who we are as Africans? I mean, as of now, people are embracing the Western culture more mm -hmm. than our own culture. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to come a time that we say enough is enough and we unite as Africans? I, I think, you know, it, 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 we've been colonized too, too long. Yeah. We were enslaved yes. too long. Uh, we uh, have been told yes. and taught that we are not good. We're not good enough. Yeah. Uh, and I think one person at a time, we can start to change that mindset. Okay. And uh, 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 by embracing who we are, mm -hmm. by being authentic, mm -hmm. by not accepting to be defined by somebody else thank you uh, and, uh, and and once we start l losing those shackles yes uh in in accepting brother and sister uh from the continent and from outside the continent yes. our brothers and sisters that were sent all over mm -hmm. out of uh, the greed mm -hmm. of other uh, uh, other people we embrace each other we accept each other we open our homes for each other wow we seek that unity and that strength, we will, one day, we will get there. Ah. I know for sure that it sounds uh, to the younger people yes. more glamorous to, to adopt yes. the other culture. Exactly. I hope we start making our own cultures, our own belief systems, our own ways of life to be the mainstream. Not for anybody else, but for us. We need to be able to take back that which was taken away from us I, I i did spend a night here and you guys are very welcoming you and papa ah. <laughs> i loved everything the hospitality i'm so grateful oh anytime I, I want to talk about you know you you and papa you <laughs> how long have you been together ah, you know good question let me just go back to what you just said about yeah. you know us being welcoming yeah yeah i want to go back to what uh uh, uh Reverend uh, uh, Archbishop Tutu said, Okay, Omuntu, Mumuntu, Nabantu. Oh, Munu, Munu, never move on. We are, I am because you are. Wow, so, yes. when I see you, I see my son, exactly. I see my grandson. So, uh, uh, my house is your house. I felt at home. I, I want you to learn from me if I have anything to teach, yes, which is positive. Exactly. So, you're welcome. I, I did. And, and then the next question that you're asking, yeah. how long have we been married? Well, 
who I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I hope you walk in our footsteps. You are the newlyweds. Yes. We are getting into our 40th year of marriage. And at this at the end of this year, yeah. we will be celebrating our 40 years together. <laughs> and you're welcome. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's really nice. Let's talk about your time abroad. Mm -hmm. I mean, people think in that America or the Western countries, they are a land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. I want to hear it from you. You stayed there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's a land of milk and honey? Here, here's what I'm going to say about the Murikas. Yeah. <laughs> Opportunities yes. are there. Opportunities are there. Opportunities are there. Yeah, okay. You, ha you work hard, you put your mind mm -hmm. to doing something. Yes. Educational opportunities, business opportunities. You have to have that mindset. Okay. Okay, okay. To get it. It's not given to you on a place. Yes. It, I don't, I never saw the, the milk flowing in the, any of the streets. Neither did I see the honey flowing. So there are so many opportunities that are op open that we don't have here uh -huh. is in, in Africa. Uh, limited by design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we go there and, and seek the same opportunities that uh, are available. Um, you know, uh, Africans, wherever we are, uh, have this identity of being the last on the totem pole. Yeah. We are looked down upon. We are not uh, appreciated. You have to work five times as hard to prove wow. <laughs> yourself. Um, sometimes you get passed. Uh, yeah. Opportunities, you know, pass you by. Uh, it takes a lot for you to be recognized as anything that is... Uh, is somebody who can who can really produce and and uh, uh, make an impact, but uh, despite that, uh, Africans of hmm. uh, Africans from the continent, Africans uh, by descent, uh, Africans who are taken away from the continent, yeah. they work hard, they are successful, they are in high powered positions, yeah. they do great work. Uh, they are scientists, they are teachers, they are nurses, doctors, they are astronauts. They're everywhere. Mm. But there's this element where you have to work harder than uh, mm -hmm. the person who is uh, of light skin. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't need to prove. But you, as an African, you have, you to. have to prove. It's really it's tough. tough. It's tough. Yeah. I always miss Zimbabwe. It was very difficult when I first left the mm. continent. Mm -hmm. Very, very tough. I felt lonely. I felt isolated. I didn't know anybody. Of course, I spoke English. Yeah. You know, we are an English speaking nation. Exactly. But it took a while to be able to, to understand the American and Canadian accents. So I n never severed that connection. Mm -hmm. uh, I always knew I would be back at some point. But it was tough. It was lonely. It was but lonely. over the years, I, th that's why I managed to live there that long. I got accustomed to the place. I, I, I climatized. I raised my children. Yes. I worked and uh, I, I lived there. But it, was, it wasn't easy. I never, ever forgot to, to come back home. I mean, I asked you this question when you, we were cooking breakfast. Mm -hmm. Comparing the, Af the African food with the Western food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which, which is good? Let me tell you, we always look at our food as simple, simplistic. Yes. Uh, there's nothing to eat. Yeah, exactly. But in a way, I think that is a way, one way of protecting ourselves from too much harm. Those of us who are leaving now to go outside of, uh, of uh, Africa to these uh, uh, <laughs> so-called developed countries, yeah. be aware of these uh, processed foods. They, you know, too much weight gain, you see. Oh, yeah. Uh, precipitating other uh, conditions, diabetes, obesity and all that. Uh, so they, we have to be mindful. Our food is simple, but very nourishing. What about Africa in general, the image of Africa that is being portrayed out there in the Western countries? From what I've noticed, Africa is a bad continent. Africa mm -hmm. has wars a lot of diseases. Do you think that is high time that we start portraying 
the real image of Africa rather than that is being portrayed on social media? You know, it, it, it makes uh, perpetuating that na narrative of Africa being mm. disease prone, exactly. full of wars, uh, tribes fighting each other, exactly. uh, lack of education, you name it, mm. makes it this is why we all want to go there, right? This yes. is why they do better because we are, you know, downtrodden, we're poor, we're, we have all those problems. Yeah. But it is time that you and I yes. take that initiative to change the narrative. We do have problems. Exactly. Trust me, yes. I uh, was very disheartened just when I returned and I went downtown. Mm -hmm. The amount of... Uh, uh, dirt yes you can see poverty you can see people are struggling exactly um and, and that's the story of africa in general but we can change that narrative there are a lot of people who are doing very well thank you very much yeah there are very nice places here in in zimbabwe there are beautiful places in the rest of uh, africa i've been to ghana i've been to uganda mm -hmm. there's a lot of progress uh in developing yes, you know yes but here's what has been happening over the years yes. which they don't acknowledge right resources are being taken have been taken historically from the exactly. continent exactly. to develop the first nations the first world countries oh my god and we are left with the disaster of all that extraction of our re, of, of our raw mineral minerals yes and uh, and our uh, agricultural produce yes and even our human intellect <sighs> so we are left looking a complete disaster it seems like they come with something that might seem as if it's important and to say give us that but it's, it's something that's temporary uh -huh. it's not something that is going to build us as africans yeah and then they take something that will prolong them as africans we are left in the dead mm -hmm. they take our minerals and then we just stay but we also it's high time that we take responsibility thank you for our own situation the more we continue to, to assign and complain that that person is doing that, this yeah. to me yes. without me doing something about it. Yes. You know, it doesn't have to be retaliation. It's the it, wars don't solve anything. You know, sometimes it's diverting your attention from this person and saying, okay, or even learning from them, teach me how to do it. Come and teach me how to do it in my own land. Develop my land. And then maybe I can go help you develop yours too. Wow. War is not the solution. No, war is not the solution. It's not going to bring the solution. It brings a lot more stress, strife, and furthermore, disaster. There have to be other ways. This yeah. is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's helpful. What has been your time so far in Zimbabwe? Is it really good? I love every minute. <laughs> Watch my videos. I'm having I do. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life here in Zimbabwe. I am at peace. This is what I always emphasize. My spirit yes. is at peace. But so things need, do need to improve. Yes. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. I'm not denying myself uh, the joy <laughs> <laughs> the joy of being here. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think that young people have to play a certain role rather than complaining a lot? I think a lot more young people need to do the hands-on. They, okay. they need to get down yes. and do the dirty work. Okay. It, nothing comes easy. You know, th there's a lot of us saying thank you, diaspora, mm. <laughs> for your remittances. But that has crippled some of our young people. Even some of us, because instead of me yeah. struggling to say, Brenda, so I'm a pretty, eh? the yeah. water that I use to wash my dishes, I can use it to water one or two stalks of, of vegetables. Yeah. I don't even think of conserving that water. I throw it away. And then I'll be calling my nephews and my nieces. Yes. Mm. I'm not saying we shouldn't help each other. That's what Ubuntu is all about. Yes. But there's a certain element of crippling that I feel has happened. Dependency syndrome. Dependency. 
where we don't feel we can hustle and work hard. Okay. And I also get it that the jobs are not there. The manufacturing industry is crumbled. Yes. Ah, but somewhere, somehow, if we put our resources together, yes. Because till one one, when we are individual, yes. it might take us a lot longer, or it might not happen. Yes. But if we try and put those resources together and maybe bring out something. Uh, that might uh, that might be the solution. Young people, mm -hmm. especially, they gotta look at what is it for me in this country. What is it that I can do? Uh, country first. What is it that I can do for this country, for the next generation, exactly. for the children that I will have, and their children and their children's children. So, from the way you are saying, it seems like the wound of one is the wound of four. It is. But it is. From what I've seen, what I've noticed, as young as I am, people are selfish. It's, it's really sad. We don't think of others. We think of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I am really happy I, I got an opportunity like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, you welcomed me as your child. Mm -hmm. and you, Mwana, you are a child. And you gave me You're this. You're my child. Yes, you gave me this gold information that's rare and each one teach one yes uh -huh. <laughs> pass it on that's what i'm going to do mm -hmm. that's what i'm going to mm -hmm. do we have to change the way we think i'm mm -hmm. so i'm so grateful for this if if we could have young people change the way they think and start to take care of each other start mm -hmm. to work for themselves mm -hmm. and i was really excited you know I, I used to think that diaspora is not investing back in Zimbabwe. That's what I used to think before I started doing this. Ah, uh, there are a lot of people that want to come back home. And then God said, let me show you yeah. the other side. Yeah. I was shocked. A lot of people would like to come home. Uh, but I say, if your focus is to come home, come home. You know, don't put the limitations of poor roads, poor health, mm. poor schools, poor everything poor, poor, poor. Uh, once you put that negative uh, aspect to it, then you won't be able to come home. You feel paralyzed. Mm. And I try and, and think positive and live in the moment and live positively. I don't want to think disease. Mm. <laughs> I'm thinking healthy, you know, because I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to the hospital. Exactly. Uh, so I, I take good care of myself. I enjoy myself. My mind is, is, is free of clutter yes. uh, and I, I try and, and do the best I can every day. Thank you Gogo for, for having me. I'm so grateful. So guys, I'm actually going to put a link of Gogo's YouTube channel in the description box. The name of the channel is Kaya's Gogo. She's, she has been working so hard in uploading amazing content. It's amazing yeah. content. Thank you. You you met Wodemaya. Yes, I did. He came here. Wodemaya came to your house. Yes, he came here. Shout out to Wodemaya. That man, yeah. I, I, yeah. I believe he's not ordinary. You know, when I met Wodemaya, uh -huh. he was not even wearing shoes. He's <laughs> a simple guy. He's a simple uh, young man with a message. And uh, just changing the narrative that you and I are doing. Changing oh. how we think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. and embracing each other it's really amazing mm -hmm. ah god god bless africa oh <laughs> god bless africa and thank and you so. god bless you <laughs> god me bless and me. everybody yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so so that's it guys and thank you so much for watching and thank you for subscribing and liking and let's go in our numbers show gogo love to her youtube channel if we could probably maybe have about five thousand people subscribing to your youtube channel I'm, i'll be happy <laughs> let's do it let's go and don't forget to keep subscribing to this young man's channel <laughs> kelvin you. biriot is taking the message yeah we are good yes we are changing the narrative so do support him too thank yeah. you so as of now it's goodbye